I, pre I paid those people. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here today in person to MediaTel for hosting such a tremendous event. The content today has truly showcased the value of TV and the fact that it is, of course, not going anywhere. However, it has provided insight into the way that we need to consider it, consume it, and as an industry, need to begin to adjust the way that we plan for it. For us, that means having to or linear TV, part of a much more broad and connected strategy, something that we're going to be calling Total Video. We're going to talk about this over the next 15 minutes and why we truly believe that the future of TV is Total Video. But before that, we shouldn't just be the guys who arrived late to stage because we were chatting back. Um, my name is Jason Perlano. I'm the SVP of Commercial at MIQ here in Canada. And hi, everyone. My name is Stephen Warren, Senior Partner Manager on the Bell Media team, working on our DSP partnerships and our new and exciting Bell DSP product. Perfect. And I'm going to try to utilize the entirety of the stage because I didn't get to the gym this morning. Um, we are going to be utilizing the, our time with you to discuss three specific sections. The first is we're going to talk about the TV landscape. We're going to talk about where we are right now as an industry. And of course, where we're going in the future. After that, we're going to talk about total video. We've used that word a couple times now, but not to define it yet. Uh, we're going to talk about what it is, how to plan it, execute, and of course, measure it. And finally, Stephen's going to walk us through the MIQ and Bell Media Partnership. We're extraordinarily excited about this partnership. We announced it about three weeks ago in Media and Canada and Strategy. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to walk you through a case study from the early days of that partnership. So with that said, let's get started and look at the landscape as it currently stands today. There's been a lot of stats thrown at you today, by the way. Um, we're utilizing eMarketer as the basis for truth uh, for a lot of ours. But what you're seeing is that more and more households are becoming unreachable. So the stat here is that 32% of households in Canada are unreachable utilizing a singular linear TV strategy. I want to provide a bit of context. We've talked a lot about Netflix today. We're not going to say it once during this presentation. Uh, but we are going to talk about other forms of media. So 32% of households, if we weren't targeting them, that would be the equivalent of running a programmatic audio campaign in the Canadian market, not focusing on adults who stream free content across apps like Spotify. So it's significant. 32% would also be indicative of running a social strategy and not considering the world's largest, fastest growing social platform, TikTok. I'm sure there are at least 10 of you in the audience that are utilizing it right now. And finally, 32% will be re like running an out-of-home campaign in the Canadian market, but not accessing or utilizing a single solitary digital board. So with that said, all of this really adds up to the fact that we're saying that linear TV as a standalone just isn't capable of the mass reach that it once was. So we've talked about where we are right now. Let's talk about where we are going. So again, eMarketer stats here. Um, what you're seeing that as early as last year in 2021, cord cutting households represented just under, or sorry, just over half of those of pay TV households. If you fast forward four years to 2025, what you're seeing is those numbers are nearing parity. Now, what this truly means, again, is the fact that linear television can't be responsible to do all the heavy lifting by itself. It is, of course, an important part of that lift, but it can't do it all as a standalone. Now, as a result of this, we need to begin to evaluate the realities of TV and how it's bought and planned. So the realities are that there are some challenges within our industry and, you know, uh, the panel just before the last one and it headed into the break highlighted a few of them, but we're going to talk a couple more right now. And that's the fact that the planning tools that are utilized right now are inconsistent between broadcast or traditional and digital. And as a result of that, what we're seeing is the outputs aren't really well aligned. In addition to that, you know, there's some agency partners here in the room. I saw some clients here today. The teams themselves are siloed, right? Between planning and digital, or sorry, planning and buying, digital and traditional, what we're finding is that these teams being siloed does preclude them from sometimes having an overarching holistic approach, in addition to the fact that they're utilizing planning tools that are also dated. There's un uneven ad frequency in the market. So TV is bought and planned utilizing an average frequency model. 
Now, the data that we've seen clearly defines the fact that heavy TV viewers are consuming a lot more of the ads than those who are light TV viewers. What this leads to is a significant amount of overspend against an oversaturated audience. Let me provide a bit of an example from MIQ. So we work with an ACR partner exclusively in the Canadian market called Samba TV. ACR is automatic content recognition. For those who don't know, it is hardware that is embedded into your television, provides both data around the content that we see on screens. And what we have found is that brands are spending anywhere between 60 and 70% of their linear TV budget against 20% of the demographic that they're buying against. One more time, 60 to 70% of the investment in linear TV is being consumed by those heavy TV viewers. We've talked about this a lot today in the slide before with regards to cord cutting and the fine cast presentation earlier um, really highlighted this, but there are of course the cord cutters that are contributing to limited reach. Now it's not just that, it's of course people who are streaming content across a multitude of other platforms and devices. So what does this mean? This means if you're buying a demographic like men 18 to 34, for example, you're missing out on a significant portion or component of that audience through executing primarily in linear television. And lastly, fragmented audiences. I know I've heard this word fragmented come up quite a bit today. Audiences have never been given more choice in terms of the content that they're consuming or the devices that they're consuming them across. So much so, in fact, that those pay TV households aren't immune from the fact that they are also streaming content. So we're seeing that they're streaming up to five hours or more over the course of a week, even though they subscribe to pay TV services. Now, as a result of this, we believe that a more holistic view is appropriate when it comes to the video, regardless of the channel or device that it is streamed on. And we call that total video. And I didn't memorize what it says, so I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna read it. Total video to us is a collection of all the screens and platforms consumers view video on, inclusive of connected TV, online video, and linear television. Now the most important part about total video is that it is an audience-centric approach versus a channel-driven strategy. So what that really means to us is we are directly responding to the shift in the landscape that we have seen as an industry and taking an audience-centric approach to find them where they're consuming that video content and assuring that is where we're placing ads. But all the while, doing this under one unified or holistic goal. Now, as a part of this, of course, we need to begin to look at the audience first mentality, which is key to a total video approach. Now, how do we do that? Again, we're going to start by understanding an audience, and after understanding that audience, building a cross-channel approach that finds the most impactful and influential way to engage and reach these audiences. This all starts with insights that we get from a multitude of partners, most of which are in the room here today. So the first one, looking at viewing and consumption habits. We get a lot of this, and you're gonna hear a little bit about it uh, from our partnership with Bell Media, but Bell Media is a provider of that, uh, and Logic is also a provider of that for us. We then look at the channels, platforms, and devices that they're being utilized. Next, we look at the lifestyle, so psychographic, behavioral, and contextual. This comes from partners like Enveronics Analytics. We'll hear a little bit more about that today as well, I believe. Then we look at the real world environment or macro factors that are impacting or influencing the way people consume content. More often than not, we overlook this one majorly. And if you think about it, in a post-pandemic world, we have seen the amount of content being streamed across uh, mobile devices skyrocket now that the pandemic is you know, mostly over, uh, is, is the word I'm gonna use. And finally, we look at creative versioning and personalization. The one thing that I wanna use as the baseline, and I think Greg had mentioned this earlier from Chorus, is demographic information kind of serves as like table stakes now. No longer are the days of targeting adults 25, 54, 18 to 49, like good enough. All right, we need a lot more insights about these audiences to then begin to inform the channel strategy and mix that we utilize. Now this is a huge part of the approach that we're bringing to our partnership with Bell Media and Stephen's gonna walk you through that right now. 
We practiced the handoff several times. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. We're excited about our partnership with MIQ and the work we're doing across Total Video for all of our clients. As Jay mentioned, linear TV is still the most effective and the most efficient way to reach mass audiences at scale. And, that, and that's still not changing. Um, but to sum up all the great stats that Jay presented earlier, a total video strategy is how we take this to a whole nother level. So in order to plan for total video, we first need to break down the silos between TV and digital. That includes people, operational, technology, and data silos. Bell, who many of you know as a grassroots TV media company, is uniquely positioned with an advanced tech stack that sits across television and digital. Our first party data, namely our five TV set-top box data, helps marketers understand TV viewership and linear TV ad exposure like never before. We can segment TV audiences by exposed, unexposed, or even by frequency of exposure, such as light or heavy TV viewers. The solutions we can provide to help plan and activate an optimized total video solution is one of the following three solutions. One, suppress linear TV ad viewers to find incremental reach across digital channels. Two, and this one might be more common, um, is retargeting TV viewers across digital channels. And then three, sequential messaging across TV and digital. Let's say, for example, Jay here is sitting at home, lying on his couch with his feet up, um, watching TSN, and then boom, a 30 second ad appears for a nice belt. Um, and, and Jay sees it and he likes it. Then a few weeks later, Jay is um, you know, maybe on his mobile device and now he sees a, a short form creative focused on direct response uh, with a call to action on his mobile device. Now that's effective. So here we have a slide that actually brings a real life working example of how we've done this for a luxury auto brand who one runs a lot of linear TV, um, but their goal is really to maximize incremental reach and maximize ultimately maximize reach against their target audience. So what we did here is we used Bell's linear TV set top box data to identify households who have been exposed to this client's linear TV ads in the past three months. We then built segments which mapped household IDs to device IDs and segmented the audiences into exposed light viewers and expo exposed heavy TV viewers. In the Bell DSP, we were then able to suppress all exposed heavy TV viewers and set a frequency cap of just one for the exposed light TV viewers. We do not want to over inundate uh, this audience. As a result of this, we were able to drive, as you can see on the screen here, 14% incremental reach against cord cutters and non-exposed linear TV audiences and increased message frequency against light TV viewers by 3.8 times. That's great results. Using our data and MIQ's analytics, we were able to provide insights on TV shows watched, audience engagement, top indexing audiences, and more to help the client continue to optimize their total video strategy for all future activations. Perfect. And based on the massive clock in front of us, we've got 55 <laughs> seconds. You can imagine, I'm gonna start the process. I'm gonna rewrite what's on the screen here. Pull your phones out and scan the QR code. And I'll tell you why in a second. But I wanna thank you all first and foremost for being an attentive audience. Uh, we massively do appreciate it. And to wrap things up, we truly believe that the future of television, I feel like my photo is being taken by hundreds of people right now. <laughs> this was an ego play the whole time. Uh, the future of television is total video, and we truly do believe that linear television is a significant part of that. Whether it's trying to solve for some of the challenges or issues around limited reach, you know, planning tools that are you know, just not up to snuff, or of course, um, frequency challenges, we believe that total video could be the solution to that based on utilizing an audience-first approach, focused on cross-channel planning, then looking at that reach and frequency that Stephen just highlighted, and finally, making sure that all forms 
of video are held accountable to some form of measurement and ROI. Now, with that said, the QR code is going to take you to a、um, page that will allow you to download the MIQ Advanced Television、uh, Case Report or Case Study. Sorry. In addition to that, and probably why I told you all to take your phones out so you had time to do it,、uh, it's going to give you an opportunity to win a 65-inch Sony Smart TV. If you're having a challenge, I actually recently made my phone background the QR code,、uh, so you can find me during the networking break, and I'd be more than happy to help out. For those who、uh, who don't,、uh, just let us know. And again, thank you so much for your time and attention today. We massively appreciate it. Thank you, everyone.